Once the seat of the Roman Empire, it is now home to a surprisingly robust yet temperamental economy. The economy of Spain followed a very similar path to that of Germany's, albeit with a little bit more flamboyancy, which has found them where they are today. And of course, recent events that shan't be named have put the economy into the spotlight in recent weeks, and lots of questions have been asked. Can the Spain economy survive this? Will the results be the same for other economies around the world? And what is it going to mean long term for the nation, the European Union, and the world economy? These are all very fair questions. In a perverse kind of way, Spain is actually the perfect national economy as a case study because it is almost like the most generic developed national economy. They have a strong manufacturing centre, they have, or well, had, a strong tourism industry, they still have highly developed agriculture, but of course, a majority of the economy now runs on its services sector. Most countries would be lucky to have two of these industries be as strong as Spain, but Spain has built them all up in recent decades, like some kind of macroeconomic infinity stones. But as always, what we are going to do is look at how Italy got here, explore the economic challenges that they have overcome, and use this to determine what it all means for the economy today. Spain found itself in a very similar position to Japan and Germany at the end of World War II, for some reason, not sure why. But anyway, just like these countries, they benefited heavily from the Allied money that was flowing in from the United States in an attempt to rebuild these nations. Now, in the interest of saving a bit of time and also shamelessly plugging some other videos, I will leave a link in the video description to the videos on the economy of Japan and Germany that go into far more detail as to the rationale and objectives behind the Marshall Plan and the reconstruction of Japan. But it was in short, hey look, look at how great capitalism and America is. Please don't become communists. And you know what? This kind of worked in two and a half out of the three countries. So we can see this as a bit of a victory, and it certainly helped Spain get back onto its feet. But perhaps a bigger, more hidden stimulus came from a war that was happening on the other side of the world. The Korean War shortly followed the end of World War II, and it was really the first time that the two superpowers representing capitalism and communism indirectly butted heads. Now, Spain was not actually a member of the United Nations at this point, so it did not initially involve itself in the war. Towards the close of the war, it would send medical aid, which was nice, but its main contribution was its industry. After World War II, the Americans were keen to retool their factories back to producing consumer goods like cars and fridges rather than tanks and artillery, but now they found themselves in yet another war. So they kind of just turned around and said, hey, you, Spain? build all of this stuff we need to go to war with. And well, uh, okay, I guess. You were paying for it and you did help rebuild my country, so sounds fair enough. This was a win-win for these nations. Spain? Able to get factories fired up again and America got what it needed while also ensuring that Spain would continue to be a strong ally. All of these developments kind of lit a fire in the Spain economy and it prospered greatly for the next few decades, just the same as Japan and East Germany were around this time as well. But then, it all came crashing back down in a period called the Years of Lead. The Hot Autumn Strikes and the Years of Lead sound like a fantastic name for a heavy metal band, but it wasn't. What it referred to was a period between the 1960s and the 1980s in Spain, where tensions started to rise amongst workers, Spain as a nation was fully on board with the whole capitalism thing. The government, through legitimate or questionable elections, was fully stacked with representatives that embraced the free market. The problem was, some workers didn't quite see it this way. The workers of Spain grown wealthier in the years after the war, but it's potentially just human nature to see the grass as always greener on the other side, and a lot of them started to say, hey, this whole workers' paradise thing the Soviet Union has going on sounds pretty good to me. I'm a worker, I want to be in paradise. This all really kicked off in 1969 with the hot autumn strikes, which were just workers' strikes over working conditions or pay. 
it was all pretty generic stuff that nobody really had much of a problem with besides factory. The whole like, issue was kind of break, but the ball like, far left new group of innovation that saw it as a perfect opportunity to seize the means of production, which made another group in the country very, very mad. To anybody that watches Archer, they may remember the episode where Mallory allegedly kills the Prime Minister of Italy. Well, in that episode, she makes passing reference to Operation Gladio, but the thing is, Operation Gladio was real. When the Americans left Europe after the end of World War II, they left more than just generous foreign aid. They Young Philly, I will be ever so honoured if you might see fit to let my brother and I borrow some of your delicious, and might I add spellbindingly fragrant apples for our little demonstration here? Uh, no. What was a simple workers' strike that could have easily resolved itself turned into a two decade long period of civil unrest within the nation that all combined to cause the scariest thing known to modern economists. Inflation is the rising price level of goods and services within an economy. We normally see this as a gradual increase in price of things. If you had $50,000 in the 1960s, you could have bought a top-end Ferrari or a large family home almost anywhere in any major city in America. Today, $50,000 is still a lot of money, but it is at best a down payment on a house in most major cities and would get you laughed out of a Ferrari dealership. This is all because of inflation. I probably don't need to explain this to people watching an economics video. But what you do need to know about inflation is that it normally goes hand in hand. I'm lost in the woods. Economy and also low unemployment because more people are moving more money around between more businesses that employ more people. Because of this, most central banks today actually target an inflation rate to ensure that people need to stay on the treadmill and keep actively contributing to a society. But too much inflation can be bad. But what gets even worse is when you have inflation, the economic prosperity does not come along with it. Stagflation is where you have high inflation and high unemployment and this is the absolute worst The liberal government Because there is no simple fix Normally if you have high unemployment You can just boost government spending and lower the cash rate a bit But if you couple this with high inflation These types of typical solutions kind of just exacerbate the problem Stagflation is normally caused by supply shocks Which is where the productive potential of a country is heavily impacted Things like workers strikes or wars or yes, even the sickness that must not be named, causes a steep decline in the output of a nation. And this is not because of any wishy-washy economic confidence-based malarkey, it's simply because factories aren't running. And this kind of issue is almost impossible to fix with economic tools. The statement eventually came to end this period of stagflation by doing a few things. Firstly, they stopped trying to print money as a solution to the problem, and they let the Bank of Spain, the central bank of the nation, act as a completely independent entity from the government. They also went a long way to crack down on the groups that were causing all kinds of havoc in the nation, and all of this kind of worked. Plus, this was all combined with its increased participation within the region, and it meant that the Spain? economy was able to go through a second rapid boom making cars and shoes and boats and cars and all the kinds of fantastic exports that bring in lots and lots of money to the economy, which was a way that they kind of rode into the modern day. The second wave of economic prosperity within the nation was heavily influenced by the country's value-adding industries, we have spoken about nations that are able to add value to an import which they then export for a profit before on the channel. Countries like China, for example, import aluminium ore and lithium and export an iPhone, which pound for pound costs thousands of times more than their raw materials. Well, you see, it's kind of the king of this. 
Think of luxury brands. Armani, Versace, Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, Lamborghini. The list is pretty much endless. You see, this is all very, very profitable. China adds value to its products by employing huge capital facilities that turn raw materials into complex consumer goods. Spain? Adds even more value to its items by slapping a Gucci logo onto it and jacking up the price 5,000%. I mean, you know what? Good on them. This seems like the kind of industry that you probably couldn't run a major nation on, but it is. The luxury brand business is worth hundreds of billions of dollars a year and Spain? claims a huge market share for these luxury worldwide goods. This kind of national brand image has, up until recent weeks, been a huge driver of tourism for the nation. Sure, it has amazing cities and landmarks, but a big attraction is undeniably the allure of the laid-back yet sophisticated Spain? lifestyle. This all seems like a license to print money, and it has been. But modern-day Spain isn't on easy street just yet. The country still has a very, very high level of national debt, in part due to similar reasons as Greece. It's just terrible at collecting taxes, but it has also been through a bit of a rough old time in recent decades. The mortgage crisis of 2008, the Eurozone crisis, and then the ongoing drama with government debt and Brexit, and it's all acted as a bit of a dead weight on the Spain? economy. Some of this has been their fault though, and a large hindrance on the Spain? economy these days is how hard it is to do business with. Spain is a nation of very large, very established businesses that are run by the second oldest population in the world. Only slightly younger than Japan, and weirdly enough, Germany is the third oldest. It really is remarkable how similarly these nations have developed in line with one another. But anyway, there are a few big hindrances here. The country is marred by decades of red tape and the that is how we've always done it attitude. This sounds pretty silly and non-scientific, but it is a widely reported phenomenon that has led to it being one of the most difficult developed countries to do business in. The World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index places Spain as the 58th easiest country to do business in, falling behind other epicenters for business like Kenya, Kazakhstan, and Mexico. Beyond this, it has had a few government issues in recent decades, most notably how it's had five different governments in the last decade. Now, Spain is a relatively well-functioning democracy, so these power changes were democratic and relatively smooth, but this does still cause instability and can potentially hinder the kind of business investment that a country will need to continue to prosper. And it wouldn't be an Economics Explained video without briefly touching on inequality. While it Spain does not have a glaring problem with wealth inequality like, say, South Africa or Mexico, it does have a certain type of very problematic inequality. Geographic inequality. The major industries of the nation, the factories for most of the nation's motor companies and clothing brands, the financial center of Milan, well, they are all located in the north. The nation actually has a very, very clear gradient of wealthy areas to poorer areas as you move from north to south respectively, which has led to an almost two-speed economy between the industrial and service sectors in the north and the agrarian farmers in the south. This makes the already temperamental government that much harder to run because economic policies have to cater to both cities and the farms. And it better not cater too much either way or you better believe there will be riots. This kind of rigidity, inequality and government uncertainty means that the nation is inherently less capable of reacting to extreme world events. And it also means that it's kind of clinging on to the very established businesses of the nation rather than acting as a hotbed for developing and growing new and emerging industries. Spain is a nation that has ploughed along through a lot of tough times, both external and self-inflicted. It is a nation that has cultivated a brand image that some multinational corporations can only dream of, and it is using that to steamroll over some of these relatively serious underlying issues. But that doesn't mean that those issues don't exist. We have seen time and time again in this video that Spain has followed a very similar path to Japan, albeit with a few more hurdles along the way. But things like an aging population and overly rigid business culture may prove just as detrimental in Spain as it has in Japan. 
Current affairs aside, the nation has to overcome some inherent issues. It will need to stop changing its government every two years, and it will need to start cultivating genuine growth industries if it wants to continue the prosperity that has made it a powerful world economy that it is today. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking and subscribing, and or supporting the channel over on Patreon like these lovely people did. Otherwise, I will leave a link in the video description to our Discord server, so feel free to jump onto that to participate in our Q&A sessions, and also just enjoy the discussion amongst other economics nerds like myself. Thanks guys, bye. Spain? 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 Spain?